Oh man, what's going on? What's going on? Dial face. Late night <laughs> conversation. Well, late night, man. You've been busy all day, man. I, I know you've been busy uh all day. Uh I I've been busy all day. Um but uh we're we're back in an interesting one at that, man. So we we got so much to unpack, uh, Dow. We me and you. Well, let me let me just say that me and you we we've been we've been YouTube colleagues for about a good minute. Um, I mean, you're live. You're on the channel. You're a friend of the channel, and you have been for years. I I watched your your struggles I, I i watched your successes and everything and me and you we we butt heads along the way too not everything that that i say you agree and not everything that you say that i agree but but we give each other that respect and i i want to First, say I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate the fact that we give each other that much respect. Because if anything that we have any issues or anything like that, unlike unlike other how other play outs on social media, me and you, we kind of like keep it one hundred in the background. Like if I have a problem uh -huh. with you, you. If I have a problem with you, I'll call you up and be like, hey, sis. Hash it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. do that live on YouTube. Yeah, and you'll call me and, and you'll stuff. call me up and you'll be like, hey, bro, what's it? So we 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 have that. We have that. And I I want to say thank you very much for that. And I appreciate you. So let's um let's get into this, man. Uh uh Dow face. Um a lot of the stuff we have talked about already so uh i'm i'm gonna like combine it like some of the questions that 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 me and you have conversate probably might pop up again in this particular conversation we try to like keep it like all inclusive so we we're gonna talk a lot man we're we gonna talk about love we're gonna talk about trucking we're gonna talk about guru and we gonna, huh. and and we might just throw a little bit of sassy in there. You know what I'm saying? So let's uh -huh. let's let's just start. Let's let's just start from the beginning, man. Um, you of course went back to variant uh, trucking. Your um, your dispatch service, which we're gonna touch on that. Um, you went back to variant um, for reasons. Without going into too much detail, because you already pretty much, uh, pretty much explained the the reasons why you went back to variant, but just give us a cliff notes of what brought you back. It's a good company. Simply put, it's a good company. Everything I've said about variant, all these years, these past three years, is true. And I'm never, ever, I'm not going to be at a company that I'm not happy at, but it's not going to help me take care of my children. And that's why I went back. Okay. I'm a mother and I have to take care of my children. And however, wherever that's going to help me do that best is where I need to be. And that's Variant. Okay. Shout out to Variant. Now, I my feelings about Variant slash us express now they are part of the conglomerate which is now night swift they're up under that banner now um even with all of that uh with with night swift uh coming in and and bringing variant uh slash us express up under their banner your feelings for the company still the same because didn't you do um a stint with night at one point yeah i was with night for a year and a half 
I don't know if you noticed, but like a long time ago, I was, um, I had, I think I did a video about how my daughter was in an abusive relationship and I was in San Antonio and Variant sent me home. They, they erased my violation on my clock so I can get home. So I drove in violation. And when I got there, they, um, they put me and my family in a hotel room to get away from the abuser. And then the next day they called me and they said, you know, take as much time as you need. And is there anything else we can help you with? Do you need anything from us? And that was so powerful to me being a, being a survivor, right? Being a survivor of, of abuse to have that type of support because that's what, that's what, you know, victims lack. They lack that support, especially from employers. And for them to, they didn't have to do that. I'm, they're not, I'm not, my family is not their obligation. They could have got me home and be like, all right, good. Let me know when you're coming back or you can be back tomorrow or whatever the case may be, right? But they put me and my family in a hotel room and said, stay as long as you need and come back when, you, when you're ready. And then have the nerve to come and call the next day and check up on me and make sure I'm okay. And if I needed anything, that set the tone for the company for me. They actually care about their drivers. This is before I was anybody at Variant. You know what I'm saying? So when I say they care about their drivers because they care about their drivers and the people who did that, this is when Variant was small at first. The people who did that trained the people who came in after them to be like that too with the drivers. So when I say Variant cares about their drivers, that's what I mean. I'm not, I'm not just saying that to say it. They really do. Uh, sticking with uh, sticking with variant. Um, I I I talked to a few drivers that didn't feel the same uh, but, love. Yeah, they as, don't feel the same love, but they don't open their mouth to get the help that they need. They go to social media and complain about it. Well, some some would say, Dow. Now, listen, don't don't get mad at the at the at the at the guy. But some might say that Variant did so much for you is because you're like the the golden child. You you was the one that came and pretty much put Variant on the map. But this is but they helped me before they even knew who I was, before they even knew anything about Dollface. Before before I put Variant on the map, they were there for me and my family. This is brand new coming out the gate, starting a Variant. And then on top of that, shoot, if if I am the golden child, then you would want to get to know me and get in good with me so then I can, I'm not the golden child, but I know people and I know how to ask questions. You could, Me and you can know the same people, but if we don't know how to have a conversation with those people to get what we need out of those people, if you don't know how to, you know, talk to them like I know how to talk to them, we might ask for the same thing and get different results. It's all the way in the wording and the communication. But if you come to the company and you know me and I put you in contact with the people that I know, now you got the same contacts that I have. It's what you use, it's what you do with them. It's how you network with them, how you get your problem solved. And most people don't know how to do that. They just know how to complain. They don't know how to open their mouth. A lot of people sit and wait for something to happen and they wait for somebody to come and save them or help them, but they don't open their mouth and let people know what they need. And I've learned a lot, a lot about myself at this company too. And I'm not the golden child, but best believe that. You're you're back uh, with Variant, and now you you're you're teaming. Uh, you went through a couple of teammates so far. Um, it wasn't all that great. Like without going into into too much detail, because we we already talked about about the first one, but without going into too much detail with that particular situation, what give us the cliff notes of why did the why did the first teammate didn't work out? Uh mm huh. He's a white male, and we're not compatible. He's a white male Republican. And we just don't have the same views and we're not compatible. That could just that's all I can say. 
after that one, uh, you decided to team with a female. And unfortunately, uh, that didn't work out. And looked like that pretty much ended, what, today or yesterday? What, what, today? So what was the... What was the vibe? Why why did the vibe wasn't there for women? Because I, I would think that women would tend to team better than a female with a man anyway. Um Well, when I'm controlling, apparently, and she's new to trucking and she had an ideal of what teaming should be. I had an ideal of what teaming should be. And at the end of the day, our ideas didn't con- conglo- conglomerate, I guess. They didn't come together. We weren't compatible. Now, to touch on that, why did you decide to team with uh, a new driver versus uh, a driver that has about the same amount of experience as you do. I mean, you kind of been in the game for for about a good minute. And by the sounds of this, this young lady only been in it for like four or five months. Why team with her? Because I would think I would think probably the compatibility wasn't there because she pretty much saw you as a trainer versus a natural teammate. Would you agree with me on that? No. Um, she, I, the reason why to answer your first question, I rather, I rather be on the truck with somebody new because they're, they're more, uh, they're like a sponge. They're more receptive to information versus somebody who's been driving and they're probably set in their ways and they already know everything. They think they know everything already because teaming is a whole different ball game at Marion. I can't say for other companies, but at Marion, they tell us how we should run our truck. And if we run it that way, we're gonna be successful. So people who come in as a team, they can do what Variant suggests they do, or they could do what they wanna do. But if you do how Variant suggests, you're gonna make some money. And people coming in usually have their own idea of how a team is gonna be ran. You run during the day, I'm gonna run during the night, period. That's not how, that's not how they suggest us run. And when you feel like, but I'm not saying that that's what's going on with my situation. I'm just saying in general, that's why I would want to, you know, team with somebody that is new to trucking because they're, they're trainable. Um, and then the reason why we didn't work out and, and, and all of that is because I had an idea of what I thought needed to happen and that, and I was wrong and what that was. And I found that out today in, in the meeting. I was wrong. And that caused her to get off the truck. And we didn't get along. We we get along, but we weren't we're just not compatible. She's new and she I probably wasn't the best for that. That's all I guess I could say. And I admit that. I, I admit when I'm wrong and when I need to, you know work on stuff. I'm no, no stranger to being wrong. And that's why I say I'm not the favorite and that's why I say I'm not the, the you know, the golden child or whatever at Varian because what happened today, I could have very well lost my job. Can't go into details, but I'm <laughs> thankful I didn't lose my job. I finally found someone I can love. Good, clean love. Without utensils. I'm, I'm thankful for that, too, especially up under your current situation, which we about to talk about right now. So, Dow, um, I want to say you're back on with Variant, but all together, what, three years? And, with the, and, and within the first couple of years... You really was successful. Variant really put you out there. They had you as the face of of the of the um, of the trade shows. Uh, you was there at the 
she trucking tra trade show. You represented variant there. You represented variant at the uh, at Matt's. And, and Variant pretty much took care of you within those first couple of years. Would, would that entail you found love? And on top of that, you got yourself a house. And on top of that, you got engaged. You're very transparent about uh, your life. Um, you found love. I but, love. Or I found love, 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 found, love. Oh, you found the ideal of love. Okay, okay. So, well, that ideal of love kind of tainted. What mm -hmm. happened? What happened, Dow? It just moved too fast. I was so I was so in love with the ideal of being in love. I moved too fast. I wanted to be somebody's wife so, so soon. I jumped into it. Are you guys still engaged? Are you still engaged to get married? What's, what's, no. what's the relationship like now? Nope, no engagement to get married. I am. Um, who the hell is calling me now? I'm uh, I'll call the wedding off when I get married. Why? Well, I mean, what? I mean, was it was it a mutual thing? He, would, I mean, he, it's not mutual. Um, <sighs> that situation, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, quickly, but all I can say is, I'm tired of talking about it. So this is the last time I'm going to talk about it. But. He's a different caliber of guy, and I'm a different type of caliber of woman, and we don't mesh well. Um, you know, I think he's the type of guy that has a he. He's used to a certain type of woman, and I'm not her. And he he got something out of his league, and when you get something that you never had before, you want it really bad. You're gonna try to do anything possible to keep it. And maintain it, even if it's out of your price range, out of your, your, you know, living above your means or, and I'm not speaking just, you know, as far as money is concerned, but living above your means as far as <laughs> Kevin Samuels talks about it, he talked about it a lot, just, you know, the quality, a quality woman or a quality man. We have two different quality levels going on around here. It's just not compatible. Is there a type that you feel that you would yeah, be compatible Yeah, I'm learning with? that I think I have a type is the type that is um, confident, honest, God-fearing man who leads me and his family through the direction of God. He gets his direction from God on how to lead his family. Now, unfortunately, uh, you you did do a live feed uh, touching on um, the finance, the financial stability of your home, and I, I I don't know if you want to touch on that, but that was part of the reason why you did come back to Variant. Yeah, um, well, I, I got myself to a position where I thought, you know, now I have the man, I got the house, I got everything that I need, and maybe I can, and I and I have my, um, my finances in order. Um, after I bought the house, um, like I had a lot of money in savings before I bought the house. And then after I bought the house, I had to, I used that money that I had in savings to buy my house. Like that was the purpose of the savings to put the money down and stuff on the house. And after I bought the house, I'm recuperating my savings and I'm getting it up and, you know, my credit and all of that and everything is going as planned. I meet this guy and I'm like, okay, 
you know, my next chapter. It's time for my next chapter. I, I got myself where I needed to be, where I wanted to be. Now it's time for the next chapter. Let's go. And <laughs> uh, that next chapter happened. I got engaged and about to try to start a life and have a family outside of my children. And then that was going well, seemingly. And I was like, okay, now it's time for the next chapter, right? Let's start a business. Let's let's get off this truck. The, but my plan was always save money and get what I need, you know, credit and stocks and bonds and savings, buy a house. I wasn't even going to buy a house that year that I bought it. I was really supposed to be buying a house this year. Um, but credit, stocks and bonds, savings, stuff like that. And then... The next chapter is, what's your exit plan to get off the truck and start law school? Well, that was starting a business and, you know, doing all of that. And I was like, now I can do it because I'm in a place where I my income is all right. My savings is all right. And then I also have a man that can that's going to support me in my dreams of going to law school. And he's going to hold the fort down while I, you know, start my business. And he couldn't do that. He couldn't, he was not capable of doing that. So before my bills got too far behind, um, before my house goes into foreclosure, I'm going to do what I know best is that get back in on the truck and hustle, hustle and bustle, get that money. And that's what I did. After all the good stuff that happened to you within the last couple of years, a lot of the wall stuff came into play. Well, you you said yourself that the money that you save went into the house. So so there wasn't no more money. Coming? No, there was more money, but I got in that car accident when I was off for four months. I went into my savings on that. And I pretty much depreciated my savings. And then when I got off the truck to it's so much stuff that happened in between that. Like I don't tell everybody everything on YouTube, right? But there's stuff that happened with my daughter that I had to help with and and my granddaughter and my mom. And it's so much shit that I'm the, I'm holding up my family right now. So now my income is depreciated and everybody that I held up can't return the favor. They can't reciprocate. So I'm depleted now. I my my tank is empty. I've given all that I can give and now I'm empty. So now I have to recuperate, go back to the drawing board, get my mind right, get my spirit right, get my money right. And and now when I come back out, when I'm done with this drawing board, it's gonna be a totally different scenario. You saying this from a spiritual aspect. So you think God is testing you again? Um, life is always a test, but yeah, of course. Okay. Life lesson. Yeah. Okay. I believe that, I believe that God gives me lessons that I need to take with me because there's something bigger coming. Like, it's like going to school, right? You can't go to, you can't go to 12th grade without going to kindergarten first. You got to learn certain things in kindergarten, in first grade, second grade, you know, elementary before you can go to middle school. You got to learn certain things in middle school before you can go to high school. You got to learn certain things in high school before you go to college. It's stepping stone. There's levels to it. So I believe that everything that I, that happens in my life regarding anything and everything, I believe they're stepping stones to the higher, to the higher thing. Like before I bought this house, I wasn't thinking about buying a house, right? I was thinking about renting houses, but before renting houses, I was thinking about renting apartments. Then I went from renting apartments to renting houses. Then I went from renting houses to buying houses. Now I'm not even thinking about buying house. I'm thinking about building a house. My next house, I'm going to build it. And I'm not going to just build it on a little lot with a homeowners association. I'm about to build it on some acres. And I'm going to keep thinking bigger and bigger. So maybe what I'm going through right now was a tester home, was a starter home to, to get used to being a homeowner right? Learning how to be a homeowner. So then I can, when I master that, then I can step up to the next level and now I can build a home. And the same with relationships. When, we get, when relationship fails, that gave you, whatever you learned in that relationship is supposed to give you all the tools that you need to take with you to the next relationship. You can't learn how to be a wife if you ain't never been a wife before. There ain't no book that comes with how to be a wife, but the Bible 
and you still got to put that in in in, in like um in play you got to actually do what you learn so i i never knew what was i never knew what was so bad about just jumping into a relationship what what can, what's the worst that could happen now i know <laughs> so now your fiance seeing you going through all of this going through the troubles going through the hard times what 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 is he what is he not doing like why is he's not why is he's not helping he see you struggling like um has there been a time when somebody in your family that you loved that was really close to you asked you for some money and you didn't have it and they really fucking needed it yes why didn't you give it to him if I had it, yes, but I really didn't have it. Okay, so, but so, but why did you watch them struggle? Okay, I I see. Okay, I see. Was okay. I mean, okay. yeah, I I get it. I mean, I I was put in situations like that too. Like, I mean, somebody asked me for the money, considering the fact that I'm working and all like that, but. I, you I can't was, squeeze blood out of a turnip. Right, right. You don't got it. You don't got it. Right. I, I, I don't want to be that person that, that say that I couldn't help. But when you got, and I'm, I'm talking for myself. And it, it's almost in the same boat as you. When, when you, pretty much the breadwinner. Everybody looking at you. For me, because I'm used to I'm used to the hurdles. I'm used to challenges. My thought process before I got a, a, a therapist, before I started going to therapy, my thought process was I'm gonna pray for the worst. I mean I'm pray for the best and hope pray for the worst and hope for the best. Prepare, sorry, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. And I always thought there was peaks to my life. When as soon as I got to the peak of that mountain, everything's about to go downhill. Cause the only thing that's constant is change. I already knew once start stuff started getting good and going good, something bad is about to happen. And she was like, you need to stop fucking thinking like that. Stop thinking like that. Don't think like once things will start going good, then something bad is going to happen. Don't think like that. And that's how I used to think. But when I changed that thought process, that's when my life changed. So it's, it, I'm used to challenges. I'm used to hurdles. I'm used to problems because that's all that I ever encountered through my whole entire life. Like, Life is not normal for me if I don't experience problems, like impossible problems that any other, any other people wouldn't be able to get out of, like problems where you can't call your friend for $500 or your family member. I mean, people who, <laughs> I don't, like I compare myself to a, a, a well-off white family. Like if some stuff was to go down, they probably got to get credit. They probably got, they have resources and, and equity and stuff that they can do if they go, if they get into the situation. Me, I have nothing. I don't have nobody I can call. I don't have a support system. So I'm used to when shit hits the fan, wiping that shit off and keep it pushing. <laughs> just gotta wipe it off and keep it pushing. I'm just used to the challenges. So it's, it's not hard for me to, it's not hard. It's, I get, this is my normal. Like, I guess I'm living a whole different life normal life of you know that my normal before was going through the sex trafficking and domestic violence that was a normal and abuse now i'm going through a whole new negative normal and it is it, in this a thought process it's a mindset that you got to get you got to change the paradigm once i change the paradigm then my life will change and that's a process it's not it's not gonna happen overnight and i recognize that shout out to you you making it happen you being there for your family, you trying to make sure that your family will continue to have a roof over their heads, and that's why you're out there doing what you're doing. Bas basically the same thing what I'm doing. Like, I'm out here, I gotta make sure that everything on the home front is pretty good. Even if I'm out here with, with pocket change, I, I gotta make sure that the bills is taken care of, the roof is fixed. Mm -hmm made sure that things is taken care of and like i said before uh when you're the breadwinner 
and everybody looks at you to make sure things get done, it's kind of hard to open yourself up to someone else that that may need your help. And you and and it and it hurts a little bit to say, bro, I, I know you don't want to hear it, but I, I have I got my bills that I had to make sure that I pay and I only got like a dollar left to my name and I really need that for the week. You know what though, I've noticed? You know how like um the dispatch and stuff, like people keep asking me, well, what happened to the dispatching company? Should you be making money with that? And People who ask me that question, I feel like they're ignorant. Because first of all, if you knew the freight market, then you know why I'm on back on the truck. You know why I'm back on the truck if you know the freight market. And you know the answer to that question of what happened to my dispatching service. But if you don't know the answer and you don't know the freight market and you're not ignorant, but you just really just don't know, well, this is the reason. It's because the freight market, the freight rates are so low, drivers are struggling right now. I saw a report um, off of DAT showing how many trucking companies went out of business this month. That's how bad, look, this quarter, last quarter, how many truck companies went out of business last quarter. Drivers are not on operators like that no more. It's, they're struggling, right? So how are you going to dispatch for companies that are not existing? It's so hard. And the money is not good right now, it's like it used to be. There was, I think I saw somewhere drivers getting like up to $6 a mile, some accounts. And that was like two dollars fifty cent per mile. Where are they gonna find the money to to pay a dispatcher, right? And then I hear people say, you know, you can make hell of money. You can make six figures dispatching. I'm so sorry. That is the old me. Okay, let's, let's get into that uh, dispatch. So, of course, Dojan Global, which is the name of your dispatching company, is still it's still getting off the ground. Uh, of course, freight rates and and other factors uh, that's playing in how long it's taking for it to get up off the ground. But you, uh, before you got into dispatching and you got interested in the dispatching, you decided to uh, join uh, TT, TTG. The trucking guru, um, unfortunately, yeah, um, unfortunately, she's in a in a in a bit of a controversy right now. But you, as a person that actually took the course, how was it? How was it for you? Uh, what? How was it for you? And how did you find her? And how did? What was your experience with the whole thing? Somebody sent me her, a good friend of mine that I trust, sent me her course book. And from there, I did one of her free, um, like, courses. And then I, then I took another course from another person who was doing dispatching. I paid for his course. And... I felt like I still needed more information. So I went back to her to, and I started doing some research on her and seeing what, what she offers and how this works. And, and then I, I thought, I felt like I needed more information and I, I didn't know everything that I needed to know to be successfully starting a, you know, a dispatching service. So I bought her course and I compared all the information that I had from all the different sources that I got the information from. And majority of it, like probably 90, 95% of it was all the same information from all the sources. It was all the same stuff. There was probably like 5% difference. And and it, it varied by the difference. Like one part, one person, they probably offered a whole bunch of miscellaneous things that would be helpful later on in my dispatching service. One, you know, gives you actual, like, how to run a dispatching service, like not not just start it, but how to run it. What happens after you get your carrier and, and you actually get your first load and what does that look like? A day in the life of a dispatcher type thing. And another one was probably giving out information like with box trucks, dispatching box trucks and dispatching, you know, specialized freight and, you know, dredge and the oil field and, you know, 
they, there's some load boards, like so fucking many load boards. I found a specialized freight load board that don't nobody really know about. <laughs> I was like, this is fucking cool. And then, then how do you use those different websites to get information to help you with your business and to further your business? So every different avenue that I learned from, I got something from. Um, and Kiara's group, her Facebook group, you have to be a subscriber. You have to take the course. And after you take the course, you can opt in to pay in $39.95, I think, a month, $39.99 a month. And you have access to her Facebook group and her tribe. And on, in the tribe, there's a file section. And there's so much stuff in that file section that it's, it's good, good stuff. However, some of it is outdated. However, you don't let that you don't let that deter you because you find out what that outdated stuff is, what was it that made it so special at that time, and then now you try to find something better than that. So I don't even let outdated stuff mess me up because I'm like, okay, this was a shippers list. Okay, these phone numbers might not work, but let's let's see if they got some new phone numbers. What's some shippers related to this shipper type thing, right? A shippers list for box truck, a shippers list for reefers a shippers list for certain just different things everything that's where the value came so um her dispatching course like i said it was all the same stuff that i can get everywhere else you can get it you don't have to pay for a course to take so, and she even says it too to people on her videos that she does she says you don't have to pay for dispatching right for a dispatching course all that stuff is free you can get it online um and i got value out of her course I have no complaints. The only complaints I have is with her as a person. I have no complaints of her as, as her business. How much was the course? I don't remember. I don't even remember. I just remember I didn't have the money to afford the course. I started looking up and down Facebook pages and timelines and stuff to see if there's any discount codes. I found one. I typed it in and it actually worked. And I think I got like 50% off on the course. Or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember how much it was. The going rate of a quote unquote dispatching course. Oh, I took four. I took three courses actually. One was fifty dollars a month, and it was self serve, but it was it was structured where you can't go on to the next. It was like a six week program, and you can't go on to the next week until that week passed. So if you binged and finished everything that first day, you still got seven days before you can access the second part, right? So um, that one, it was $50 a day, but I mean, $50 a week. And I think the max was probably like three or $400. Okay. Uh, the other course that I took I like him so much. His name is Charles Mundy, and he has Exodus Logistics and Dispatching Service. Or I don't remember. E L L C. E Exodus Logistics Learning Company. I don't remember, but Charles Mundy. I got his information off of Truck and Hustle. He did a video with with um, Ramel on Truck and Hustle, and I just loved his spirit and his soul. And he's a, a faith guy. He's he's faith driven. I think his course was probably 150 or 125 or 200. I don't remember. And Kiera's course, truck and hustle, um, not truck and hustle, but the truck and guru. Her course, I think, was the most expensive out of all of them. Well, Kiera's course, TTG, the truck and guru's course. Um, do you feel? Do you feel that uh? that you was taken advantage of? Do you feel that everything no. that you that you got uh from the course, the uh the Facebook group, the 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 Zoom calls, the did you feel that you were scammed? No, not at all. Nope. I feel like I got good value out of the I got value out of the course because it cooperated all the other stuff. So all the other stuff that I paid for, all of that's the collaborator. But she had a couple of extra things in her carrier packet that a lot of other company, other other people didn't have, that I thought was pretty cool and a little bit more thorough. For example, um, you have a carrier agreement, 
that you send to the carriers and they have to fill it out so you know what they want and like and you know how they want to run stuff like that but you, and that's public record you can find that anywhere you also have a dispatching agreement basically saying the carrier is agreeing to let you dispatch for them mostly everybody has that too however kiera has a load finder agreement which is important because what people don't know is you can't use the MC or DOT number to get on load boards and find loads for them. Because remember how everybody's talking about being a dispatcher is illegal because it's like being a broker. You're not allowed to find loads for them. And the DOT broke it down on what that means, what it looks like. And basically you can't find loads for more than one carrier. Basically that's what DOT is saying unless it's it's worded a certain way. The carrier has a worded a certain way. So she created a load finder agreement that creates that certain wording that allows you to the dispatch for multiple carriers legally without having to worry about DOT or the FMCSA and all of that stuff. And I'm not, I didn't see nobody, nobody else has that in their carrier packet. So I did get value from her stuff. I did not feel like I was taking advantage of or used or promised something that I wasn't gonna get. Because there's value. It's so it's value all up and down, all of that. It's value in the course, it's value in the course materials, even though may, may all of it may not be hers, it's still value in it. It's value in her Facebook group, it's value in the file section on her Facebook group, there's value in the members of the Facebook group. There's value all up and down all of that. There's value in some of the stuff that she says, even on the face. If you just look at her at the face of everything, the controversy that she's experiencing right now, there's value into listening what was going on with this controversy. Because why did why is her business not up and running right now? Why is it forfeited? There's value. You learn something from that situation if you listen carefully. Look at how she's branding her business. There's value into how she's branding her business, why she can call herself the trucking guru. Like, people should learn from that. You can learn from... So you don't think you wasted your your time or money? No, where? I do not. Mm -mm. I, I don't like that girl. I don't like Kira. We're not friends. I don't kick it with her. We don't hee hee ha ha. She probably don't fucking like me either. That's on a personal level. On, on a business level... She's good, but on a personal on a, on a business level, she's all right. But on a personal she level, on, on a personal, personal level, y'all y'all two y'all two just don't mesh with each other. Yeah, we don't mesh. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I can't. I, I can. I, I can only respect her as far as what she's doing with her business. I can't say nothing bad about it. Okay. And that's coming from a hustler to a hustler. Gotcha. And that, and game recognized game. And that's and I I said that before. It's. All this to me is like it's it's a hustle because and you know the people um, who complaining they are so square they don't even recognize it. people who are complaining about her and all the shit that she's doing they're green the people who ain't saying shit are the hustlers all the hustlers is in the background just peeping shit they being quiet because they already know the hustle <laughs> that's that's the streets man YouTube you YouTube is is a big trainer you you can you can youtube anything 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 that you can think YouTube of academy anything you can type it in on youtube and you can find it you just you just got to take the time to find it i just feel that people with 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 this type of courses i just think that people that thinks that they seeing that hey they made all this money. I want the shortcut instead of mm -hmm. taking the time to mm -hmm. to research, to look. But you think about this. Think about why businesses succeed. Why do online businesses succeed? Why do YouTube creators succeed? Why do people who have something to sell or anything succeed? Because they're either making you laugh, entertaining you, helping you solve a problem, or creating a solution to a problem. Those things are always going to make money. Period. She's causing, she's helping solve a problem and creating a solution to a problem. She found out. She found a way. 
she figured to to uh capitalize on it. That's that's the word mm-hmm. I'm looking for. Thank you. All right. So again, you you didn't get into the group just to just to be buddy buddy with her anyway. You- I wanted I wanted her to help. I wanted her to help with my nonprofit. I wanted my idea was I was gonna get a government contract to help because I found the money. I found the money already. I just needed somebody who was going to partner with me to start this nonprofit so we can get survivors into dispatching courses. And the government was going to pay whoever's course it was. So if it was the truck and guru, the government was going to break the truck and guru off a check every time a, a, um, a survivor uh, got into her class. And I was going to mentor them. She was going to teach them dispatching. The money was there. All I needed was the second piece of that puzzle. And Nobody wanted to touch it. Not none of the people that I asked that I took their courses. Like, what, what, what fear do you have to help survivors of human trafficking and domestic violence? This is for sure money. This is actually for sure government money. But did nobody want to do it? I wanted to work with her. I wanted, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to work with her. Hey, hey, Mr. Peterson, there's a cold one waiting for you. I know. And if she calls, I'm not here. You, let's let's touch back on the dispatching. How you said in your live feed that it, it's hard to to get in contact with with brokers, to work with carriers, to work with drivers. How hard is that cold call? Like it's I, hard. I I got some videos on it. I haven't posted them, but I I recorded all of my Zoom meetings. That shit is hard. They they'll either say that they're not interested. First of all, finding somebody to call is probably the hardest because most new authorities are not even active yet. They're not even authorized for hire. Um, Then you get them on the phone and, well, you got to get them to answer the phone (laughs) once you find somebody who is authorized to, you know, to run. Then they got to answer if they don't, then you got, once they do answer, you got to say the right thing to keep them interested. And they're usually like, I don't, have the money i got a dispatcher already um i'm not interested just playing out not interested or they'll say yes let's try it out and then they bail out before you can get them their first load or they'll say yes i'm interested and never send back the carrier packet so i i had i think i got three carriers and and a lot of them were power only or box truck. I've been watching um a lot of uh a lot of YouTube, a lot of videos, and I I I come across a couple of people that that talk about um that they're starting their own they own dispatching course. I mean not course, but they own dispatching service. Um they got they got their service up and running, and in one of those particular uh, videos, uh, they said that the people they've been getting in contact with are are like like uh, Serbians, uh, Eastern Europeans, and some of them guys over here asking them like, "Can you let me see how you work for about a week?" Or let me see it see you work for about a month. Have you had any contact with those type of t- type of people that you that you're doing cold calls with? Like, hey, this is Dojan Global. Uh, I would like to offer my service to you, and and they come back to you and say, oh yeah, well that sounds good, but let me try you out for about a couple of weeks. Have you have That's you came what across? That's I offer to them. That's what I will offer to them. I'll give you a free week. A free week. You can look at the website. Go on dispatchprohtx.com and you'll see I offer a free week so we could try each other out and see if we're a good fit for each other. But getting and getting to that point is the hard part. They'll either say yes, but they never send the carrier packet, or they say no, they got a dispatcher already. It was really hard. And plus, I didn't do my due diligence because you need to call at least you want to try to call at least probably 100 carriers a day. I probably call like 10 a day. 
cold calling is really fucking hard. At least for me, it was. It was really challenging. This goes back to the YouTube videos that I have that I have seen. Uh, is it possible to uh, run a dispatching service and being on the truck at the same time? Is that possible? It's possible, but what I always tell carriers is what I used to always say, like, you know, what brokers do usually is they'll post a load on, first of all, if you're using, if you're only relying on the load board to get loads, you're not doing it right. The load board is the last, that's the bottom of the barrel. That's crumbs. If, you, if your dispatcher is relying on load boards, find another dispatcher because they're, they're not doing you any justice. They're not doing you a service. But if, they, if that's all you got and that's all you can rely on right now, then you want that dispatcher to be in front of that fucking computer all day long, looking at the loads. With the, As soon as the load pop up, you want your dispatcher to jump on it. If you're on the truck driving and that load pop up, how are you going to jump on it? You don't even know it popped up because you're too busy driving. You want that dispatcher making connections with different brokers and customers and trying to secure contracts. Every day, your dispatcher needs to be on the phone with different shippers, different distributors, different manufacturers trying to secure a contract for you so they don't have to rely on the load board. You don't got time to do that all day while you're on the road driving, but your dispatcher does. In between your loads, while, while, they're, while you in between, you know, your delivery, pickup and delivery, that your dispatcher should be working on your behalf trying to find you some more money versus just getting the next load. They need to be finding out how they can get you a government contract, how they can get you contracted with some lanes, with some shippers, some manufacturers. They need to be building relationships with brokers. They need to be watching the load board because brokers will put loads on there at one rate. So say, for example, they put a load up there on Monday morning and nobody bid on that load but by Monday afternoon, they need that fucking load moved. So guess what? The price is going to go up. They're going to offer more money for that load. And now this now is going to create a demand. Now all these drivers are going to jump on it. You want to be the first driver to jump on it. But how are you going to do that if you're not even watching the load board because you're driving? So your dispatcher needs to be doing that. And that happens a lot. It happens a lot. So you so you say this, this dispatching thing should be a full-time Yes. Thing. Yes. Okay. But you can dispatch on the truck while you're driving. All of this you learned through the TT, the the no. TTG. Yeah, no, I learned through all the different resources. Uh, all, all the all, all the resources together, not yeah. just TTG. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What I didn't learn from TTG is how to cold call. What I didn't learn from TTG is um, what the day in the life of a dispatcher looks like. I, what I didn't learn from TTG is what type of scams brokers be doing. <laughs> they be scamming the shit out of these people. I didn't learn that from TTG. Okay. Now with now now let's let's touch back on the TTG for a second because another another situation that's uh that is popped up is called turnkey trucking. Uh <laughs> I look. I, I'm just going to say it. Uh, if you don't know nothing <laughs> about trucking, if you don't know nothing about nothing. Don't you fucking get your ass in a truck trying to start a business. Don't don't start a, a business. business. Don't throw your money at something you don't know about. Right. Because to me, I, I know a lot of you guys is going to hate me for what I'm about to say, but. I feel that if you don't have a CDL, you haven't driven the truck, Definitely and, it, and to, somebody and somebody company. and somebody want, want to give you a turnkey business of starting a trucking company, and you don't know the first thing about what we go through as truck drivers, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't do it you because you gotta understand. It. You gotta understand. You gotta That's understand what you. we go through. On mm -hmm. a daily basis, in order for you to under for you to understand what is it constitute, somebody come for up to example. you, somebody somebody come up to you and be like, "Hey, give me five thousand dollars, and all you got to do is just sit down and collect the money." No. Mm -hmm. And a perfect example of that would be something like. 
booking a load, well, expecting your driver to deliver this load, picking up in Atlanta at 2 p.m., a live load, getting unloaded, getting loaded by like 4 p.m., and making it to possibly California in like two days. Well, why can't you do it? You got enough time or however many days that you could really make it if there was no Atlanta traffic, if there wasn't a live load, if there wasn't blowouts in construction, if it was a perfectly clear highway from Atlanta, whatever time it takes to go from Atlanta to, to California, to Los Angeles, the, 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 the company owner, the trucking company owner might be like, you can definitely make that, but they're not thinking about all the different variables that's going to come into play when it comes to delivering that load on time. But they can't see it. They don't know when you go to the truck stop and eat a bad hot dog. You know what I'm saying? They don't know that you got to go back and get reworked because of the load and the weight. They don't know even how to load. They don't even know how to. You. It, it's more than just getting a CDL. You got to know how trailers are loaded. If you don't know how trailers are loaded, you, some sometimes are staggered. There's like actual diagrams on how a trailer should be loaded to ki- to distribute the weight of the trailer so they don't have to come back and get reworked. I just learned that. I probably learned that probably like three or four months ago. I had no fucking clue. I'm glad I know now. The more you know, because then now you'll be able to be a better boss, a better leader. If you don't know this stuff, you don't know what 123434 means, you do not need to be running a trucking company. Now that you had your CDL, now that you have operated a truck, do you feel uh do you feel that uh the turnkey business will work for you if you was to go that route? No. Cuz I don't want somebody to just give me something. You got to enjoy you got to enjoy the process. If you if you just want to get rich quick scheme Uh, I'm not going to say that. If you want to get rich quick, you want to give somebody some money and they hand you a fully built business, you're not going to appreciate it. You appreciate what you worked hard for, what you put your blood, sweat, and tears in. You're going to appreciate that. That's going to be your baby because you cultivated that from the ground up. Somebody just gives it to you. You're not going to appreciate it. And I I want that character. I want to build that character of my company. I don't want somebody. It's just like a service animal. You could train that service animal to learn everything about you and your moods and your everything, or you could buy one and train it to to be your service animal. That service animal ain't gonna be in tune to you if you just buy it. You're not gonna be in tune to that business if you just buy it. You gotta you gotta go through the blood, sweat, and tears, lay each brick, brick by brick. So that's not for me. Maybe it's some somebody else, but it ain't for me. I, I talked to a few people that that explained to me what what turnkey process is but let me ask you uh do you think this quote unquote turnkey type deal do you think that this is a just a prey on people's uh inability to understand what the what the trucking industry is Mm-mm, no not not when it comes to cure and ttg no if you're stupid enough to spend the money on something that you don't know nothing about, you deserve to get your money taken. That's a hustler speaking. Just like you know the consequences of fucking buying that crack, but you're going to still buy it and smoke it. You know the consequences that you're stupid enough to do it. Okay, let me, let, me, boy, let, me, let me tune it down a little bit. You know the consequences of buying that pack of cigarettes or that weed or that alcohol, and you got a CDL, but you still did it anyway. What the what the cigarette company gonna do? Like, damn, I'm scheming on people. No, it's business. If that's what you want to do with your money and kill yourself because you're gonna get lung cancer or whatever else the case may be, that's on you. I'm not gonna stop doing business because you're stupid and want to spend your money recklessly. Period. Again, I ain't, I'm not cool with Kira. I don't, I don't fuck with her, but I don't, I can't be mad at her. I respect the hustle. 
You think I have time to ask a man why he giving me money or where he gets his money from? Going back to uh, TTG and her situation, I it, it, to me, like I said before, it's it's a hustle. I, I, I I've been a hustler. I I know what it is. You know I, if, I'm 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 like what my guy say if. if I'll take any motherfucker's money if he giving it away. And that's what people used to get mad at me with Barry and all of that with this Jew. What other people like? They you you making money off of other people's miles and stuff. If Barry is gonna give the money away, why not? We can all make money. They are giving it away. The dispatching, uh, the dispatching aspect of 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 trucking. Do you do you still feel that uh, that now? Uh, with the way trucking is going now, the way the rates is being messed up, the way all these companies is going up under you, do you think dispatching is 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 still a good uh good thing to get in? You is it is yes, this still cis, is you, it still six figures in dispatching? I don't know if it's six figures in dispatching because I haven't made six figures yet. I ain't made one dollar in dispatching yet. But what I do know is this, it take money to make money and take patience. And most businesses fail their first year. And most businesses take about two years to actually see some real good revenue. There's, there's, you know, the eight ball that make good revenue in the first probably six months. But you, I didn't, I didn't have that time. I didn't have six months. I had two. And in two months, I still wasn't making money, and I had to fucking go. I, I didn't have time. And I, I, you got to really fucking put your whole soul into this, right? I was waking up at, like, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, going to bed at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, only getting, like, two hours of sleep every single day trying to start this dispatching service in my office in front of that computer. And... <laughs> There's not enough hours in the day for at that time for me. I couldn't wait to to get it because by the time you get a carrier, if you only got one carrier, you're only getting a percentage of what they made that week. That wasn't even going to be enough money for me to pay my mortgage. I needed to have like five carriers and get paid a percentage of their stuff for one week to be able to pay at least my mortgage. And I didn't have that type of time. You got to build your pipeline. You got to build relationships. You want to be talking to like insurance brokers. You want to be talking to brokers, freight brokers. You want to be talking to manufacturers and distributors and shippers and other dispatchers and other, you know, everybody. You want to get your name out there and you want to go to like expos and trade shows and trucking events and all this. You just don't do like I did and just jump in and take a course and think, okay, I can dispatch now. I, I have a leg up because I'm a truck driver. But the biggest part about dispatching is having that relationship and building that rapport and that network. And I didn't have that. So I have to go back to the drawing board. I go back to the drawing board. I give it that. And you gotta have you gotta have some fallback. You gotta have a nest egg because it's gonna take a minute before you can get that first good check. Period. Speaking of checks, let, let's talk about the pay. Um, Let's just say that you you did get those those five, and they signed a contract. How can you guarantee that you're going to get paid by them? Money laundering? They gonna come talk to me about money laundering in West Baltimore? That's one thing I got. That's some some value that I got from Kira from the TTG. You get a credit card authorization form, which mostly everybody has. But there's a certain credit card authorization form that has a certain type of wording that allows you to debit their account every week automatically, automatic draft. And there's some wording and certain things that says if you don't automatically, if it don't go through, there's a fee, a percentage that you got to pay of a late fee. And at the end of the day, you got that indemnity clause, I think it's called, or so some type of clause where you can go to small claims court and sue them. Or you just let everybody know in the industry, blacklist them, they don't pay. But you do a credit check first. 
<laughs> that's a whole you got to do a credit check on, on on that driver and hopefully they're using a factoring company and if they're not you want to convince them to use a factoring company and then you got to make sure you know the factoring company got good, is a good credit or whatever so i wouldn't even work with somebody who didn't work with a factoring company just it, to cover myself it just sounds as though as you said before, we'll, we'll we'll touch back on the dark calls, the the cold calls. Not only that, you're trying to cold call uh, drivers, carriers, and stuff like that, but you also got to do background checks on them. Like once you once you get uh-huh. a, a a carrier dial, let's say once you got a carrier, what did you have to do to? to make sure that carrier is legit what what did you do to, to to make sure that 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 carrier was legit that carrier say who he say he is and last but not least again the pay how would you get the pay out of them um well to get the carrier's information i would go on safer and on safer by the fmc it's fmcasa.safer.gov or something like that i think that's the website I'll go in there and check to see if they have an active authority. I would check to see if they if they're under a brokerage. I would check to see what type of insurance coverage they have. I'll check to see um, what's going on with their authority. What you know on Safer, you can check up different certain things like how many times they went in violation or their safety rating, their um, all of that stuff like accidents stuff like that like you could check basically if they're going to be a good carrier um and then i'll contact the carrier and they'll fill out what i call a dispatcher packet and the dispatcher packet has the carrier agreement the low finder agreement the dispatching agreement the limited power of attorney the um the credit check and they have to send back their mc authority letter their insurance coverages, their tax ID number, proof of it, and it's one other thing I'm forgetting. And a credit card, but also they have to send back credit card authorization form um, authorizing me to debit their account. Um, factoring information, if they're with a factoring company, I'm calling the factoring company, I'm checking with the factoring company. Or usually the factoring company gonna check with me. And usually brokers and factors Factoring companies talk to each other about carriers. If you're a bad carrier, you're going to be on a bad carrier list. We're going to find out about it because there ain't nobody going to want to work with you. And then that's where that week comes in, that free week. That's where that comes in at. Now you're going to try them out and see what, what what's the – then you got to have a certain amount of time as an authority. Everybody know that because they need to vet you. The brokers do if you're using just the low board. So that's how, and then if they're with a factoring company, that's how I'm going to get paid. If they're not with a factoring company, I'm going to convince them to go with one. I, I'm I'm sitting here enjoying this conversation, man. So thank you very much. I know, I, I know this is late night and, and we getting it in. We sitting here at Denny's okay. and, 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 and we, we chopping it up, <laughs> man. All right. So look, um, thou, uh, everything, everything always uh, come to a head. Your love life, your your personal life, your business life. What I'm saying. So I just want to say thank you very much for letting us, not only me, but letting us in of what's going on, what routes that you're taking, and and what's going on with you. Before we get on up out of here, man. Um, I want to touch on a, a situation that happened with another truck driver from uh from your good state of Texas. Um earlier this year, uh if you guys may not know, uh the sassy trucker, uh she was on a little bit of a situation in Dubai. Uh unfortunately, I I think the story was brought to me and I brought it I brought it out because I thought that I, I thought it was a hoax when I when I seen the story. 
but it it gained uh, a little bit more traction. It gained uh, a lot of internet uh, traction, and the story finally yeah, came out. Traction. Yeah, her her story came out. Uh, her story came out when her family actually came out publicly and stated that uh, she was being held uh, for situations that was going on with her in Dubai. Dialface, you stepped in uh, to uh, support, I guess, um, and you... Um, you 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 was there to support her. Now she's home. She came she came back. Um have you got in contact with her? Have you uh talked with her since she been back? We text a couple of times and that's it. Did she Literally go a couple of times? Did did she go into I mean we, we all know that there's multiple stories to what actually happened. I mean, we 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 can't put it in in one particular story because one story was this, <laughs> one story was that. That was you know really saying? entertaining, though. So actually. it was, yeah, yeah, do, doing a, a lot of a lot of pieces and a lot of parts came came to fruition. A lot of pieces and a lot of parts came out to play uh a couple of them played out on my channel uh i i had the pleasure of talking to many many people including her mother so shout out to her mother for coming on to the to the program but uh have you text her y'all two texts but did she like did y'all talk about like what happened to her? Did she come out and mm -hmm. and and no. tell you what happened to her? I never got her? the I never got the interview. I never got to talk to her. Nothing. Do y'all still talk to this day? Is is there still mm -hmm. communications? Do you do you feel you coming in and did what you did because you you came out in support of her a couple of uh couple of people that was not in support of her you you kind of went to bat for her. do you still feel the same way now as you did then uh, um no comment okay fair fair i i i would say the same thing I think i'm gonna be the scapegoat for the whole damn machine she well, I can say this. I'll say this. As far as her character, I still feel like they was wrong for assassinating her character like that. But being sassy trucker, I still have strong feelings about that, about her being sassy trucker. And the only people who know, know. If you know, you know. And we're going to, hey, we, and we're going to leave it at that. Dow face trucker. Ooh. Hey, uh, you about to get ready to go or you got to get some sleep? I understand you got yourself a new teammate. Um, yep. uh, you got yourself a new teammate. Um, this will be the third teammate. What do you, what do, you do, Dow, to, to vet these guys to be a teammate? Like... What what do you do now? I mean, because I'm I'm sure the first two, you you actually learn. It, it, it's trial and error, right? And you're learning. So with the first two uh, yeah. that you had on the truck, what what do you do now to vet future uh, team? I just teammates? ask them questions of what I think might be a problem. If it's a problem, if I can see it as a problem, I ask them about it. Do you smoke? Because it's a problem for me. Um, what's your work ethic like? Your hygiene? I, I really fucking profile and cherry pick. You got to look a certain way. You got to talk a certain way. You have to carry yourself a certain way. And then I'm good. I, 
I know everything I need to know. But the first one, I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know what I needed to know to vet them, to vet him. So I took that information and I learned with the second one. The second one, I know I didn't want a serious smoker. I needed somebody who likes to run because the way they want us to run as a team, you're going to have to need to run. You're going to have to understand that. There ain't no, I'm tired. I need to shut down early. It ain't none of that. You're going to be running. The truck is not going to stop, period. And you got to be on time for appointments or you're going to get a service failure and you'll get written up. And you get three riders, you're getting fired. So I need to know that you're going to be a runner. And hygiene and everything else really is what's understood and got to be explained. I don't got to explain to you, we shouldn't be talking about politics and stuff like that. We shouldn't even have a chance to do that because I shouldn't be up in the front when you're driving. I should be asleep when you're driving and vice versa. If we're running as a true team, we should never really see each other other than switching shifts and taking showers. Now, see, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I, 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 I can't. <laughs> uh, if I if I do team, like I said before, it's going to have to be with some soft legs, but we're going to have to understand that we we doing this for the money. We we ain't doing it for no bullshit. Mm-hmm. But it has to be some soft legs cuz I'm I'm not looking See, at hard I'm not, I'm not looking at hard legs all day. I'm not doing that. You won't be you can't look at hard legs. You're supposed to be sleep. Okay, watch well, hey, I'm going to be in supposed the ba- to be seeing uh, them. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Hey, you ready? I'm about to pull over. <laughs> exactly. I'm about to pull over. And then Let's they go. pull over. They go to the bathroom and do what they got to do. You go to the bathroom, do what you got to do. You probably brushing your teeth and they probably fucking get ready to go in the bunk and go to sleep. That's really how it's supposed to be. If it works out, if it works out the way you want to work out, would you would you continue the team or is this going to be temporary or what? Team. I'll continue the team until I've accomplished my goal. But I need to end. I need an end goal of getting off this truck. So, so overall, we still looking to get off the truck and still yeah. continue continue the business. I want to go to law school. I have to do that. I want to see my granddaughter grow up at least. I want to, I want to try to be there for at least the last year of my son's high school and going to his football games and stuff. How many kids like, you got? Damn. Four. Oh, okay. You got okay. God damn, you're a but grandma like, I, already. I learned with the first one, um, and I learned how to run with the first one and how to do a team. The second one, I I thought I was doing it right and I wasn't doing it right. So I think a lot a large majority of what happened with this team for the second one probably was my fault. And I can admit that. So you learn, you know better, you do better. The third better be a charm. The first one was in my fault. The second one was. I learned from both of them, so this this one should work. Third one should be the charm. Now, now the new the new person, guy, female, how many He's is a male? He's a male. He's thirty eight or thirty nine. He's been driving for 12, 13 months. He did box truck before this. All right. And and he's driving for US Espr- or, or Variant or US Express, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, but all of that don't even matter. None of that matters. The only thing that I need to be concerned about is if he smokes cigarettes or not. Other than that, whatever he does on his ship, it don't even matter to me. I, I don't know nothing. I don't see nothing. I'm not supposed to even be worried about it. How how does All the I team do my part? How does the team aspect works? Like when I was, like for me when I was when I was training, you you could say team. You're basically solo. You're basically solo driving. You're you're basically a first seat driver. You're solo, and then you go and sleep in the bunk. But no, what I'm the truck what I'm is saying, driving for you, basically. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, like you, you're in the bunk. The truck is moving. Dude or girl got their music on. 
people probably talking loud to their people it's on the phone. Bad, you can't really how is that? It. I mean, you. I mean, how do you, you? Can't really hear it. But how do you sleep through that? How how could you, you not can't hear? Really, you literally can't because first of all, the radio, the bunk has a bunk sleeper mute button, so you can turn the radio and the bunk off. The curtains are actually soundproof. They actually get rid of some of the sound. You don't really hear it. Or if it, you do hear it, it ain't loud enough to where it's disturbing your sleep. You can't really make out what the words are when somebody's talking on the phone. Plus, because then, and then you got the engine running on the truck and, or in the air conditioner or a heater on. So you can't really hear nothing. I can hear somebody's voice, but I don't even know what the words are. You can literally have a whole entire intimate conversation with somebody on the phone in the front seat and whoever's in the bunk ain't going to be able to hear it. You'll hear words, won't, 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 but you're not going to hear the actual physical syllables of those words. You're not going to, you can't hear it. Like I was so shocked. Now, if those curtains were open, you could definitely hear it, but it's something about those fucking curtains, man. Like you literally don't hear it at all. I never knew when she was on the phone. Unless the truck stopped or slowed down or something. Then now I hear a little bit. So what are you? Top bunk? Bottom bunk? Why the truck's we moving? Bottom bunk. Bottom bunk. Um, so that means y'all had to. Top bunk while the truck was moving. So that means both of you guys had to share that bunk. So how. Yeah. How. How. For me. I, I had a. I, I had a sleeping bag, so when I when I had to share it because the dude, my first trainer, he was he was fuck it, I'm just gonna say, it, dude was garbage. He he <laughs> was garbage and not pleasant smelling. I I'm mm-hmm. just gonna have to say that, like when we change, I, I literally had to Febreze his shit, like. <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Well, so but she, I, got, I had my blanket, I had a, I had a, and then I, she had her blanket on top of it. So oh, okay. She would sleep on top of my blanket, and I would sleep under my blanket. Okay. The same thing with the pillows and all like that? Like She you, slept on the foot of the bed. I slept on the head of the bed. Oh, okay. 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 But when y'all both parked, let's say you you, hotel room. you you already said that the, the truck is I have to, has to keep moving, but for... For whatever rare reason that the truck is stopped, then she's up top, you you down in the bottom. No, we got a hotel room. Now moving forward, it'll be bunks now. But this past time, it was she was on the. We were um, the last two times I slept on the floor, only because my shift ended early as far as the driving part, but I still had to stay on duty, so I can keep up with my um. I had to stay on duty so I can keep my recap and my sleep schedule. So I, when I got too tired and I would take a nap, usually if I was driving, I would take a nap. I just laid on the floor and took a nap on the floor. That must be a big ass. I, that must be a big I ass truck. Get, How is it possible for you to sleep on the floor? <laughs> Normally it would be just in the middle of the aisle. That's big enough to sleep in the middle of the aisle, but my feet were in front of the passenger seat and my body was in the aisle. Because I only sleep on one side. I can't sleep on my um, left side. I can only sleep on my right side. So the way my body would have to move. I don't know about that, man. And it wasn't meant for me to be, it wasn't meant for me to be comfortable or settled in because it was only a nap. So I didn't want to be comfortable and settled in. I really just only wanted to take a nap. And then every time else, it was we went to a hotel room. The first time we slept in a bed together, she slept on the foot, I slept on her head. The second time, I took a nap and I just slept, you know, on the edge of the bed, on the head of the bed. And the rest of the other times was in a hotel room or me on the floor or sitting in the front seat and just napping in the front seat. All right, all right. Dial face trucker, everybody. Well, we about to get on up out of here, man. I, hey, man, we we always have a good time, man. This this, I I really appreciate you being a a friend of the show or a friend of the channel. Uh, 
definitely we're gonna get back at it i'm i'm sure there's much much more stories to come <laughs> mm-hmm. so but uh but definitely uh much success to you um you got you got your work cut out for you of course but you you're a residual uh female and i know you could pull through you god put a lot of challenges in in your life and i've seen that you 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 weathered a lot of storms so this is just a storm that you got to weather and uh mm-hmm. and yeah and for on the on the way out the door uh dial face what do you we we haven't touched much on the TTG controversy, but on your way out the door overall, do you think she's everything that's coming her way? She's deserving everything that's that's coming her her way right now, or what do you what do you think going out the door as far as the controversy and everything? Um, I don't think anything. Got it locked. Want you to let me all night? Yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet? Yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G? Yeah, don't make a sound. And I want you to miss me when I'm not around. Come dive in my ocean, form my pool. My love is like l